Highly publicized cases of police killing suspects have transformed the way many view law enforcement. It is a profession under attack. We set out to find how that may be impacting police agencies nationwide. A six month long full measure investigation produced some alarming results. We found the backlash is making it harder for police agencies nationwide to hire and keep good officers that protect communities. And it's forcing police agencies to change how they recruit, who they hire, and how much they pay. Get set, go. The latest crop of recruits going through the paces at the Sheriff's Office in Frederick County, Maryland. But for those who passed the test, the biggest challenge might be navigating the social landscape in a profession under attack. An officer is drenched with water and then pelted with a bucket. Exemplified by last summer's brazen attacks on New York police who were just doing their job. Public anger against law enforcement, stoked by media and politicians, didn't build in a vacuum. I did nothing. We sit here the whole time. I'm not a tipping point was the 2014 death of Eric Garner in New York City. He was killed in a police chokehold after resisting arrest. A grand jury and prosecutors found no cause to charge the officer, but advocates cried foul, and New York paid Garner's family nearly six million dollars. A month later, a police officer in Ferguson, Missouri, shot and killed suspect Michael Brown. It was reported that Brown had held up his hands in surrender. In the end, Obama's Justice Department ruled Brown hadn't held up his hands. He'd attacked the officer and was lunging at him again when the officer shot in self-defense. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! But hands up, don't shoot became an international call to action, igniting anti-police sentiment. As you decide to go into law enforcement, have you thought about the bad publicity and some of the stuff that's going on in the country? Yes, you do see a lot of stuff that's going on, like the bad, the bad publicity, excuse me. Um, but I think it's our duty, especially with the new recruits coming in, to see that and continue to do what you plan on doing, continue to police. Some police departments <coughs> having trouble finding enough recruits compared to what it was 10 years ago. I feel like a lot of that comes from upper uh, echelons in the police departments where they're at and they feel like no one has their back there and awards getting out. Did any of you guys check out this department specifically to see what their attitude was? Yes, yeah. um, uh, our, um, our elected uh, uh, sheriff, Chunk Jenkins, always stands behind his officers. I think it's important that I know who I'm going to hire. Meet Sheriff Chuck Jenkins in Frederick County, Maryland, where he says they aren't having trouble finding good recruits. What are the sorts of things you're hearing or the concerns people describe? Uh, they're describing the fact that everything they do is under a microscope, that everything they do is going to be second-guessed and Monday morning quarterbacked. They're going to be, uh, you know, not being backed up by their agency is a huge thing. New York? Well. Chicago? No, look, look at some of those examples. You, you named them. I have to tell you, uh, you know, I back my men and women. And a young person coming into this field, this career field, has to know that because of what they're doing out there, the decisions they make, that somebody there has to have their back. I think it's really important. You're not trying to say there aren't some people I'm who are I'm not saying that wrong. at all. I'm not saying that at all. The public takes a, maybe a negative view of one incident and turns that into a, a negative view of police overall, which is wrong. It's, it's really not justified. The negative view is taking a measurable toll. Our six-month-long full-measure investigation surveyed police departments in America's 30 largest cities. Most report difficulty recruiting qualified candidates, particularly women and minorities. San Jose, California told us they were short 39 officers. One police academy class that should have had at least 50 recruits had just seven. Nashville, Tennessee was short 114 officers. San Diego, California said they were 175 below their target. They had 539 fewer people taking the police entrance exam in 2018 than two years before. El Paso, Texas told us where they once received 1,500 applications the first week of recruitment, they now average about 100. A spokesman there blamed criticism, most of it unwarranted, the popularity of challenging officers by cell phone wielding persons demanding a street trial, officers being ambushed and killed, videos of officers bearing the indignity of being doused with water and having to walk away for fear of repercussions for taking action. 
Recruit Nathan McLeroy came to the smaller rural department of Frederick, Maryland, instead of Baltimore, where his dad served as a police officer. So you, you wouldn't have applied to the Baltimore Police Department? No, ma'am. Baltimore is another ground zero for controversy and backlash. In January, a viral video showed a police sergeant getting attacked and kicked by thugs while trying to arrest a man who allegedly assaulted him. Not only were they attacking the officer, they were trying to free the suspect who was actually being arrested. Baltimore is where a suspect named Freddie Gray died in police custody after resisting arrest in 2015. Jurors found the officers not guilty of any crimes, and federal prosecutors said there was no evidence to support federal charges. But the city paid Gray's family more than $6 million. Six officers were seriously hurt when rioters and looters lobbed rocks and cinder blocks at them and burned police vehicles. Back in 1980 or 81, when I tested for a police officer in a Chicago suburb, there were 1,100 applicants for those jobs. Uh, today, those same agencies probably get 150 applicants. Stephen Cass Stevens is chief of police in Buffalo Grove, Illinois, and president of the International Association of Chiefs of Police. The group just released a new survey, State of Recruitment, a Crisis for Law Enforcement. It found recruiting problems are widespread and affecting agencies of all types, both large and small, throughout the United States. 78% report having trouble finding qualified candidates. 75% say recruiting is more difficult than five years ago. There's been a fair amount of negativity, specifically in social media, pointed against law enforcement in the last several years. So we'd be foolish to think that that's not an issue that may steer some qualified candidates into a different career. Is there a positive aspect to the negative press in terms of shining a light on maybe some bad departments or bad actors within a department? I think so, but um, the way that it's good is if the law enforcement leaders in those communities step up to the plate and step up to the camera and say, hey, we get it. Um, our officers are human. We just happen to wear a badge. And sometimes our officers make mistakes and do the wrong thing. Uh, the key is we're here to hold them accountable for their actions. To address the crisis, some departments have adjusted their policies, allowing tattoos and history of marijuana use and lowering formal college requirements. San Francisco has started allowing remote testing and interviews. Dallas and San Diego have increased pay. Indianapolis recently hiked salaries for first-year recruits from $39,446 to $51,000 and offers referral bonuses. Seattle is giving $7,500 bonuses for first-year recruits, $15,000 bonuses for transfers. Results are critical. The police chief survey concluded as vacancy numbers increase due to the inability to fill positions and as more officers continue to become eligible for retirement, exiting officers are becoming overworked and burned out. Job. You feel pretty good about what you saw today? Um, yeah, some of them. Yeah, some of them. I'm and old. Sheriff Jenkins invites recruits to come on down to Frederick, Maryland. Beginner's pay starts a hair under $50,000 with good benefits and retirement plans. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. We are the line between a civil society and, and really social chaos. And to young men and women who are looking at a law enforcement career, Take a minute and, and realize it can be a great career, very rewarding. Uh, you're not going to get rich, but you can make a good living. And again, it's, it's something that's got to be a calling. And if it is a calling, come see us. For more on our police recruiting investigation, listen to my podcast, Full Measure After Hours, on iTunes or wherever you like to listen to podcasts.